um, against Paul Benko, a Sicilian defense. Yeah, I don't know where they get that, Rochkopf. I mean, uh, Paul Morphy. Bobby Fischer considered Paul Morphy the greatest chess player of all time. But there is also another factor to consider. Um, and it's this. Even though we're comparing these world champions to what the computer would have done in the exact same situation. So it's, it's less skewed. But there's a psychological transaction that happens when you get a devastating lead over someone. A lot of times you go into coast mode and you don't really care if you play the best possible move. Any winning move will do. And we all do that, sometimes to our detriment, and that sometimes that's how some of us, I won't mention any names, but his initials are Coach Daniel, but others as well, some of us get in a winning position and mentally go into that coasting mode and end up throwing away one games. So if the overall play in the 19th century was inferior to what it is now in the 20th uh, 21st century one would suspect that that frame of mind by a mind like Morphe's would be more likely to come up in those games in other words Morphe was decimating his opponents to a much greater degree than Magnus Carlsen is and so Magnus has to play good moves or he might lose his advantage. <laughs> Morphy could lose half of his advantage and still de defeat his, his uh, lower class opponents. So I don't know. The debate will go on forever. All right, we're in a Sicilian defense here with an open variation. And after knight f6, knight c3, we have knight orf's variation with a6. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with Miguel Nightorf, but let me mention some things about him anyway. His name at birth was actually Moise Nightorf. Um, he lived from 15 April, to 9, uh, 15 April 1910 to July 4th, 1997. Uh, but he was originally from Poland. That's right, prophylaxis. Uh, but he was Jewish. And he was in Argentina for the Olympiad when World War II began back in 1939. And so he decided to stay there um, in, and um, not return to Poland. Well... He was unable to get any of his family out of Poland, though. That was the, the thing. And his wife and his daughter and his parents and his four brothers were all taken captive. And they were all killed in the um, concentration camps during the Holocaust. Can you imagine that? Everyone he loved. How heartbreaking. But he himself escaped. And uh, Providence had him in, in, um, in Argentina. Well, he adopted the name Miguel to take on an Argentinian name. Uh, he ended up remarrying, and I think he had another daughter or two with his, um, his second wife. But very sad. Anyway, he was one of the top players in the world. Um, I think he was second only to Botvinnik from 1946 to 1940. Um, 
49. And a prophylaxis, you are the happy recipient of a gift sub from um, Hardeen411. Thank you, Hardeen. Very much appreciated that. Okay, so Night Orf's Variation, and you probably know this is one of the most popular lines. And it may be very popular because Bobby Fischer played it all the time. Hello, Knocking Night. Now, Bishop E2 is Opachensky's Variation. That's named for Karl Opachensky. He lived from February 1892 to November of 1975. Uh, he was a four-time Czechoslovakian champion. And um, his peak ranking was 23rd in the world back in March of 1936. Now, that was his move. But with E6, we once again transpose to a classical Scheveningen. Kingside castle, queen's knight to d7, pawn f4 is the last move of the book uh, that's played. That's b84 in your encyclopedia. b5, bishop f3, bishop b7, e5. A3 is a slightly more frequent alternative to prevent B4. But E5 here, bishop takes um, bishop on F3, knight takes bishop, and now B4 is played. There are a few uh, moves that are more frequently played, or at least two. One of them, one of them is um, um, pawn takes pawn, followed by pawn takes pawn, knight g4, queen e2, and then b4. The other alternative is knight to g4, and after queen e2, then b4, and knight e4 and d5 then. <clears throat> Paul Benko goes directly with b4. Pawn takes the knight. Pawn takes the knight. And f5, hoping to capture the e-man. Of course, a decent alternative is to capture the g-man. But he may be reluctant to develop his opponent's bishop. But it can be played. Queen b6 check. By the way, you don't want to play a move like queen takes the f man. Because that allows pawn takes pawn. And after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, the queen has got to get out of dodge. And after knight g5, white has the initiative. Uh, he cannot take this seemingly undefended rook. <laughs> because after he tries a move like that, Queen to h5 check or simply queen to f3, which is better. I don't know, but either or, they're both going to be winning. And yeah. Um, so anyway, queen b6 check. Now a black should prevent f takes e6. He does so by playing c takes b2, bishop takes b2. But then after queen takes, 
f takes e6 can be played anyway. And after f takes e6, knight to d4 brings us to the first unique position in today's master's database. Uh, f7 has been tried a couple of times. And in those two games, the king moved to d8. Um, you do not take the pawn. And rook b1 and king c3, uh, queen c3, knight e5 check and double check. So king e7, knight takes knight. King takes knight, rook b7 check, king c8, and then you double your rooks, and that's advantageous to white. That bishop is misplaced and will be lost. So instead, king d8 is played in both games that reach that position, and knight d4, knight c5, and in one game, rook to b1 was played. And in the other, queen to g4 was played. In this game, knight to d4 was played. Knight takes on f6. The rook comes to b1, hitting the queen. Queen takes the pawn. Black would like to play pawn to e5. Rook to b3 is played here. And rook to c8 is played. Well, that allows... Uh, well, he played rook takes f6. I was going to say that allows knight takes e6. Let's come back. Queen a5 still allows knight takes e6, but after king f7 and knight takes g7 and bishop takes g7, the rook can come to b7 with check. King g6 and queen can take the pawn on d6. Then queen d3 and um, white now can uh, repeat the, the position. So, for example, after king h6, just give check. And he'll have to go back. And then you can just go back. So... Hey, Gerald Plays, and welcome and thank you for following. Uh, the interesting thing here, I was about to say, Rook C8 allows Knight takes E6, but he didn't play Knight takes E6. He should have played Knight takes E6, which sets up Queen to E1, and that keeps your advantage. Why didn't the knight take the bishop? Why didn't the knight? At what point? In the alternative line? Which line are we looking at? Uh, in the queen a5 line? You want to take this bishop here? Is that what you're asking? If you take that bishop, you let the rook back out. And now that rook is no longer out of play. Now he's in play. Now keep in mind, black is ahead in material. But what makes that, what mitigates that fact is that two of his four pieces, two of his uh, five pieces are 
completely inactive. They, they might as well not be on the board. Um, but recognizing your material deficit, White's best option is to try to force this repetition and, and just keep and just take the draw. If you take the bishop here, this rook comes into the game, and now black has an enormous advantage. Okay, you can pick off this pawn, but now the king can get tucked away as if he had castled, safe and sound behind his pawns. And with this extra piece on the board, and this piece now active, that should be winning for black. So it's a good question, though, by knocking knight. When you're contemplating a capture, you really want to consider, number one, does this capture help me or does it help my opponent? So, oops, so sorry. I accidentally hit the down arrow. Um, where was I? Trying to find my place here. Where was I? Oh, here we go. We were in this line. So, yeah, the point of capturing the pawn, um, knocking knight, is to um, keep the king exposed. You see, the point is, if you come back to the back rank here somewhere, let's say king g8, now your king is... There are lines of exposure that, that can be exploited. Well, first you take this pawn. And this actually gives white better chances. So I, I hope that explanation clears up the waters rather than clouding them. A new follower, Shark Sharkington. So, okay. Now, Rook takes F6, though, is not the best move in chess. Instead, he should have gone ahead and taken this pawn with his knight, which sets up queen to e1, and it holds on to the advantage. Even though this pawn can now be captured, after queen to e1 is played, getting your queen in line, and if if his queen takes your pawn, uh, your not, your, oh, what do you call the guy with the flat hat? Your rook. <laughs> Black's going to lose his queen because you have discovered check with an attack against that queen. Bye bye, queenie. So, something in my eyeballs. So sorry. So white, um, this this move here by white, then is a terrible mistake by today's grandmaster. I picked the game anyway because let's see how he recovers from this. After pawn takes rook, queen to h5 was played. He had to play king to d7. 
Here's another very instructive point by Paul Benko. Um, yeah, Heinz Lehmann against Paul Benko. Right above my noggin there, you can see that somewhere over here, I think it is. Heinz Lehmann has the white face, and Paul Blanco ha Benko has the black face. Not black face, but the silhouette. So here's a nice instructive move by Paul Benko. Where do I put my king? Well, you cannot play to d7. Because rook b7 check... And the king is trapped by his own pawns. And after he moves to d8, because it's the only legal move, knight e6 check, queen takes knight, queen a5 check, and now white can get a repetition in this position. Because only one legal move that makes sense you go way over the other side, and that's a, a really pretty repetition. That's a very aesthetically pleasing repetition. <laughs> Something's still in my eyeballs. Sorry. So, okay, he cannot play king d7, king, I mean king e7, so king d7 it is, and after queen f7 check, bishop uh, to e7, he played queen, takes e6, Probably better is rook to b7 check, keeping, getting these guys lined up. And after rook c7, rook takes, king takes, queen takes, check. But, I mean, black is still way better here regardless. So how did Paul Benko not win this game? After queen d e takes e6 check, new follower, <laughs> 0 5 6 3 1 4 5 6 9 5. Quite a login name. <laughs> By the way, hi, Lieutenant Hogg. <laughs> What was the time limit in this game? I don't know. I would imagine, you know, typically in those days you were looking at 40 moves in two hours or thereabouts. All right, now uh, White's back rank weakness does have to be addressed because you don't want to be checkmated in just three moves. Gerald plays. Uh, Eugenio Torre, I will tell you, control F. Uh, his birthday is November 4th. November 4th. So that's coming up soon. But it won't be on the next Today's Grandmaster program. It's on a Wednesday. I don't, I don't broadcast on Wednesdays. So I probably will not feature him this year. I will not likely feature him this year. More likely that I'll feature Sergei Movsesian of Armenia. Because that's a Tuesday.
Uh, but Eugenio Torre would be a definite person I'd want to feature on this program at some point in chess moves. All right, back to this uh, game here. So queen e1. Now, here's the key. <coughs> this is pretty common, especially at our level. Speaking of we mortals, I started to say white has to address his back rank. So he played queen e1. And I think in Paul Benko's mind, he was saying, oh, he played queen e1 to protect the back rank. But he needs to understand that there's another thing that happens when queen e1 is played. And I mean, it's not like he didn't understand this fact, but he didn't perceive it in the moment. It also vacates e6 for the knight. And so uh, rook c5? What a blunder. Gerald Plays wants to know, why not knight c6? Because you're checkmated in uh, um, just a couple of moves after you lose your knight. You're being checkmated here. Well, I guess, I guess you could still defend this back rank. You're, you're saying, but I can win this rook. Is that your idea? The problem is your back rank weakness will not allow you to ever take the rook. The second you take it, you're being checkmated. So your rook's in danger. <laughs> you're being checkmated if you don't do something about the back rank weakness. So all you're going to end up doing is losing your rook now. So you say queen takes queen. Okay, so queen takes queen. Rook takes rook. Okay, so there's not an immediate checkmate here. But you've got two rooks and a bishop against a queen. I mean, that wins almost any day of the week. <clears throat> Almost any day of the week. Someone of any grandmaster would win that in in half of a heartbeat. But yeah, I, mi I miss the fact it's not really a mate, but still it's a huge advantage for black. An enormous advantage. But anyway, coming back to here. <laughs> Queen E1... And this is really the main issue that white has to worry about is the back rank weakness. But the secondary issue is the now available e6 square for his knight. And so this move, wow, what an unfortunate blunder by Paul Benko. He can simply keep his advantage by bringing the rook over. And after knight e6, check king d7. And after rook b7, uh, bring the king out. And black should be fine and dandy and hakuna matata. Maybe rook b3. Try to expose an attack on the queen. But yeah. Back, 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 back. Oh, Gerald thought he saw a mate for uh for white. Let's see here, Gerald. It was here, right? Where did you thought? Oh, you thought 
I see. You thought, this is what you thought. You thought this, 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 and that. I see. That's what you thought with your thinking. Yeah, there's a nice check, potential checkmate pattern, but black has to cooperate. Black has to cooperate. And after they check here, he doesn't have to retreat his rook. He can bring his king here. Good stuff, Gerald plays. All right, so anyway, uh, here we are. The fork is played. And suddenly black's advantage disappears completely. Came to uh, came to stunt was thinking the same thing. <clears throat> yeah, we often um, overlook the moves that we often see only the moves we want our opponent to play, rather than all the possible moves. Rook B seven check, King C eight. Rook takes bishop. Oh, boy. Now, black does still have one extra pawn. But his rook is still not that great, and his pawns are scattered like Swiss cheese. I mean, he should still draw this at, at least, I would think. So there's got to be more blunders here. There goes the other one. Now that makes the H-man a passed pawn. Queen D1. Queen takes queen. Rook takes queen. With check. King H2. Rook D2. He gets behind black's only passed pawn. Rook d6 says, I want to hong, hang on to that pawn, but you can't hang on to that pawn. You can't allow this passed pawn over here to run amok. So black should abandon that pawn and make this seaman a passer. So rook takes c2. And that should draw with correct play. Hello, the magic, uh, the magic chess. What's the question mark, Knocking Knight? Why does that hold with a with correct play? Is that what you're asking? What are you questioning? Well, now the king can come out. Or he can push his pawn. So the point is, white's got to worry about black's pawn, and black has to worry about white's pawn. Probably just c4 here. You can give up that pawn. Uh, bring your king out, though. Do you bring the rook back or do you push your pawn? Or does it really... I mean, let's see. If he pushes his pawn... Yeah, I mean, it's easy to um, make a mistake here. If I get out of my, the way of my pawn, he's... Okay, he can cut it off. He probably, let me think, he probably want to cut it off rather than, uh, well, he can't get behind it because of the king. So you have to cut it off. If the king comes in and you try to push, the, the rook is doing double duty here. So you probably have to get your rook up here. You prefer to have your rook behind past pawns, whether it's your pawn or your opponent's pawn. But uh, this would compel this. 
if you come here, this guy is still cut off, so he can never push at this juncture, and the king can never come over and help without allowing that pawn to move. So he probably has to come here. Okay, uh, is there s there's seven pieces on the board, so we couldn't put it into the um, table base there. Uh, but hopefully that makes it a little clearer for you, Knocking Knight. Well, Rook D6, uh, White can begin pushing his, his past pawn. And um, the game ended here. It's a strange place to end the game. Okay, White has an edge, but... Is it really resignable here? wonder if he lost on time. This was move 36. Oh, that was anticlimactic. This is a strange place to... Uh, to end it, King B8, Rook F7, Rook F4, G3. I'm just um, putting in push your pass, man. Capture that. Yeah, this still looks pretty good for white because he can capture that one and get behind the other one. Okay. But you got two passers over here. I don't know if it was a res resignation. It didn't really say... How he lost, it just said that he lost. It didn't say lost by resignation or, or whether maybe he ran out of time. It was move 36, and if it was 40 moves in two hours, maybe he ran out of time. If you play G4, this is still looking great for White. Maybe he just said, I can't stop those outside passers, so I'm going to save my energy for another round. Not, not, see, it doesn't, I mean, it seems like White's got a winning game, but it's not an easily won game. Okay, now let's go here. Um, let's see, King... And from here... Well, all right, so I give him check. He's not going to want to repeat, so he has to play maybe, well, I can't play king e6. Uh, maybe, uh, does black have a repetition here if he just goes back and forth? Is there a better place to play? How does he do how does he move those pawns along? Andrew who says Get the king to the H file, says Rodkope, so like King G seven. Uh, you know what I should do is let's put it into uh, stockfish versus stockfish. Um, oops. Sorry about that. I hit the I hit the button and it teleported. I didn't know you could do that. 
but we didn't get to see how it got there. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I could do it again. Hit the button and boom, it just teleports to, to this position. <laughs> All right, did you get all that? Let's come all the way back here. Let's play it a little more slowly here. <laughs> so you can see the stockfish versus stockfish version. You can see it's not an easy win, but stockfish can beat stockfish with this position, so. <laughs> and this is how he does it. Nice. Made is unavoidable. I'm not sure. Yeah. Check. He gets a second queen to rub his nose in it and then checkmate. <laughs> 